It is ambitious to believe that the project execution will already be broken down to task level at the end of the ideation stage. If this is the case, then it can correctly be assumed that a lot of assumptions have been made that will almost certainly lead to the failure of the project. Experience is closely related to the resources assessment. Additionally, similar to the system interdependencies element, the initial engagements with technical teams at feasibility assessment stage, even before putting the project in the portfolio pipeline, should have already yielded enough information to give a weighting on how this element is likely to impact the complexity of the overall project. This is how the technical complexity construct looks after mapping for this context. On to environmental complexity. Stakeholders can make or break a project, so a proper stakeholder analysis should be done right at the beginning of a project, and if done properly, it should be about 80% accurate with the other 20% to be corrected as the project unfolds. There should be enough information after ideation refinement to determine what kind of stakeholder setup the project is likely to have, and many of them would likely be involved in this process. The market conditions element is very difficult to assess at project office level, so rather capture it in the stakeholders element through assessing the internal pressure surrounding the project. And that's how we capture environmental complexity in this context. We leave out uncertainty in relation to the triple constraint to avoid duplication as many of its attributes are already significantly captured in the other elements. An assessment of the impact of scope on project complexity should also capture uncertainty in relation to the said scope. The same goes for the capturing of size and goals in the organizational and technical complexity constructs respectively. The approach here is similar to how the task element was approached. There simply isn't and shouldn't be enough information here to make any type of assessment. The uncertainty in relation to activities is inherent in this stage of the project anyway. It's natural not to fully understand the full extent of activities required at ideation stage. If goals are uncertain, then there shouldn't even be a project. If there's a push from the top to continue anyway, the complexity level of the project should automatically be set to the highest level. This is where theory meets experience. There's no point in pouring effort into a complexity calculation exercise when empirical evidence-based intuition points to the obvious outcome. Uncertainty in relation to technology is all too common in this ever-evolving digital world. The impact, however, tends to be slightly muted in the instance where the value construct and associated KPIs are well-defined. Uncertainty in relation to stakeholders should be expected. That expected 20% we spoke about earlier. However, one cannot know what they do not know, so this element is difficult to assess. It could be better captured in the change management element where the extent to which key functions and processes requiring change as a direct result of the project will be assessed. This assessment might indicate the likelihood of new stakeholders popping up at a later stage of the project relative to the ideation stage.
It's often easy to pick up from project sponsors and owners how much information they are still uncertain about and the number of decisions outstanding in relation to the detailed requirements of the project. The result of this assessment should be included in the project complexity calculation. The uncertainty indicates the possibility of scope and high-level requirement changes that may have a material impact on the success of the project. Lastly, the change management element, where the extent to which key functions and processes requiring change as a direct result of the project will be assessed as previously discussed in relation to also capturing uncertainty in relation to stakeholders. This element also has a major impact on the scoping and the phasing of large projects. One cannot run away from doing this analysis and assessment at the onset. It cannot be left for later. The full framework after construct mapping is depicted here. Now, going back to section 2, where we did the project process mapping. We will now have to merge the context construct mapping we just did here with the project process mapping. The result is as depicted here. Remember though that each context is different. So part of the project office continuous improvement process should be going through the exercise to determine, review or refine the appropriate model for the given context at any point in time when there are material changes to the organizational strategy execution setup. We've now concluded section three. See you in section four, where we will take you through the process of doing the actual project complexity calculation.